In this chapter, I'm going to talk to you about data. I will present you the BDM feature for business data model. This particular feature will allow us to store business data in a scope that is independent from the process life cycle. For the need of our exercise, we'll create two objects. We'll create a first object to store the expense report, and we'll create a second object, which is going to represent a line of our expense report. To do that, we're going to go in the business data modeler, which is located into development, business data model, and manage. In the business data modeler, we'll create a first object, the expense report itself. Now we can provide also a description for our object. Well, I'll just write again expense report here. This is optional. Then we need to specify some attributes for our expense report. The expense report will contain at least a summary. The summary will be mandatory. It will contain also uh, lines. This will specify there, but I'll just add it in the end. It contains also a flag whether it is approved or not. This is a boolean, yes or no. We are not going to mark it as mandatory because we will not have this flag set up at the first um, beginning of the process. Then we can have also uh, some approver commands, also a string, not mandatory. Uh, we'll have also um, a creation date to know when the report was created. This is going to be a type date. This is mandatory because we'll set up uh, the creation date when we create the object itself. And we'll also keep track of who created uh, the uh, report. So created by attribute, we'll store that. This will be a Bonita user ID, so we will use a long object to store it. And this is going to be mandatory also. All right. Now we're going to create our second object, the lines. So we're going to create a second object called expense report line. Uh, the expense report line object will contain uh, the um, information in the different lines that we can add in the report. So it's just going to be a label and a cost. So I will add two attributes. I will add the label, which is a string. It's mandatory. And I will add a cost, which is a double because it's a decimal number. And um, yeah, here. It's all, it is also mandatory. OK, so we got our basic object structure. Now I need to add the lines that we define here in our report. So I'll add an extra attribute here called lines. And this will be a reference to the expense report line object. So we can pick from the list here, and we can compose a structured object itself that is composed of our other objects. So I'll take expense report line type here. I will mark it as multiple because we can have multiple lines in our report. And I will also make it mandatory. I will also move it up so that we have it in the top most objects. Just to have a clearer idea of what, what is expected for our process, we expect to have in the first, um, at the beginning of the process, we expect to have a summary with some expense report lines. And we also expect to keep track of the creation date and the offer the created by attribute. Then uh, in a later stage, we'll fill in the is approved flag and the approver comments. All right. Now for the expense report line, we have multiple options here that are pretty specific to, our, uh, to the fact that the object is composed of another object. Uh, here we're using the composition because the um, lines are part of the expense report and the lines are not going to be reused in, inside another object. If we had an object that could be reused uh, in another business object, we could have aggregation, but here we're going to stick with composition. And we have also two options to load uh, only related objects when we need. That's called the lazy mode. Or we have the other option to always load the related object. This is called the greedy mode. We're going to use the greedy mode to simplify the work. Uh, it's a bit less um, efficient in terms of the database access.
but this will simplify our work for our process here because it's not that complex. All right, so we're done with defining our business data here. The BDM is ready, we can just hit finish. This will create the database structure for us and this will help us to also to access it by creating some Java objects that we can use in our process. Now that we have defined the model, we'll need to include some references to our business data. So I'm going to select my process pool here, go into data section, and I'm going to add some business variables. So I'm going to create just one object here. This will be my report. And it's going to be of type expense report, just as I had it before. I'm going to name my object report. For its type, I'm going to choose our object expense report, which is already pre-selected here. And I'm not going to specify an initial value. I'll just leave it blank for now. That's it. We're done with the data initialization. So now we'll proceed with contracts in the next chapter.